everybody this is Diane love to bake on YouTube and what we're going to make today is called an old-fashioned crumb cake this is the easiest cake to make and if any of you have watched my videos in the past you know I like quick fast but good tasting recipes and this is one of them um, it's so easy to put together you can use um, your hand mixer if you want uh, so feel free I'm only using my stand up because I think it's faster for the video also um, I no longer I'm sorry I don't put the recipe below the video so I'll go through the ingredients slowly and hopefully clearly enough that if you want to jot them down, well, this is the time, okay? Uh, this is, a, again, a very nice, moist cake. Um, and I actually uh, started making this from my mother because she actually would make this for... Uh, uh, for our family restaurants many many years ago and our customers absolutely love this cake and I think if you give it a try I think you know you're gonna like it as well so let's get started first off what you're going to use is three cups of all-purpose flour okay and I'm just going to put that into my mixing bowl okay that's three cups all right you're also going to be putting two cups of brown sugar now I didn't break it up purposely because I wanted to show you it is packed you do want to pack that brown sugar and probably you're thinking oh well I know that already why is she telling me but I guess it bears repeating so do it means packed and you need two cups of that so I'm just going to put it all in there okay and you can use light or dark, it's really up to you what you prefer. And then you're also going to be needing a half a cup of shortening. Now I'm using the solid shortening. I know there are some people that are not fans of it, um, or they can't even buy it. Many people write to me from other countries claim that they really don't have this in the gro their grocery stores or specialty stores. So if you don't have the solid shortening, Go ahead, you could use butter and you can use margarine. I have tried all three and this recipe does taste fantastic. Now, I will tell you though, I got more compliments when I used the shortening. It tend to, I think, made the crumb of the cake, well, lighter and yet I think in baking it became crisp. So, but anyway, that's just my opinion. I'm not a professional chef or anything like that, so I can't make claims to that. I can only tell you by my experience. But I'm using a solid shortening, and let me grab a spatula real quick, and I'm going to put that in. Now, you can do this by hand if you prefer, because what you want to do is just to cut in the shortening. But what I do to save a little bit of time is I'm going to use my paddle on my mixer and I'm just going to give it a couple spins and then I'm going to do the rest by hand. Now I'm going to warn you too about the sound of the mixer. Now once you get that in there, then I just really basically, I take my hands and just, you know, keep working with it between your fingers and it'll start to become crumbly and that's what you want. Now you can cut it, uh, you can cut the uh, shortening in the flour in a bowl if you prefer and, you know, use a, um, a masher like a potato masher, you can cut it in with that. I mean, there's so many things with a knife, but my mom always showed me how to use it with clean hands. So, uh, and that's what I like to do, is to keep that tradition um, that we've had in the family in making baked goods for our, our uh, restaurants, family restaurants, again, in the years past, of course. All right, so now once you do that, the next thing you're going to need is you'll want to take one cup of these crumbs out. You're going to reserve it, okay? 
So just take out, and it could be a nice, a nice cup. It can, you know, it can overflow a little bit if you want, or dome it, or it could be completely smoothed off with your, your finger or a knife. But reserve that crumb, one cup, and then just set it aside because you don't need it right now, okay? And I'm going to just rinse my hands because the um, sugar crumb is sticking to it, so I just like to rinse, rinse that quickly. Okay, now this is what's amazing how quick this goes now. When you see how quick this is, you're going to, I think you'll give this recipe a try. Okay, now after we did that, then you take um, out the crumbs again, just as a reminder, okay, and then with the crumbs in the mixer, I'm going to add, um, well no, let me do let me do the egg first. You're going to put one beaten egg in. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly beaten, just so it's not where the yolk and the white is separate. So just I just lightly beat it. So that's one egg at room temperature. The next thing you're going to put in is one cup of milk. Now, if you have uh, if you have buttermilk, I think you might prefer that more, but if you don't have it or you don't like buttermilk, go ahead and use regular milk. Again, works great. So one cup of buttermilk or milk, your choice on that. You're going to be putting in, and what I want to do is just, just to stir it up a little bit here. Okay. And I'm going to put in one teaspoon of baking soda. That was one teaspoon. And one teaspoon of cream of tartar. Okay. And I think that the cream of tartar helps helps the, um, the base to be light and not so heavy. And then just mix it till it's all combined. I'm going to turn this up. And that's only going to take you, you know, a minute or so to do that. Because you just want to mix it. You don't want to overbeat it because you don't want your batter to be, um, I think it toughens it. But, um, and I'm just going to take the excess off here. I like to try to get off as much as I can because... You know, groceries are so expensive now, and, and baking has become quite expensive, so why waste any product? And then I'm just going to clean the sides of my bowl. Now the batter will seem, um, it'll be very nice and creamy and smooth. I don't know if you can see that or not. I hope that shot provides that which that you could see that but anyway but it will feel heavy it'll feel you know um, uh, it's not going to be real light when you mix it so don't think that you did something wrong and then just pour it into a 13 by 9 pan I did heavily grease it uh, if you don't like that then go ahead use your parchment paper if that's what you prefer and then I just really basically just put it all in there like that and I'm going to use a knife to help get this off my excess off my spatula and then just start spreading it now it'll be a little bit hard to spread you might think oh my gosh I don't have enough butter I uh, batter I'm sorry um, I don't have enough batter. I must have done something wrong. Make sure you really get into the corners, but just stretch it out. You're going to have enough. You didn't do anything wrong. And just, but do get it into the corners because when it bakes, it, it does shrink away from the pan. So you do want, you want the corners and you do want to have it as, well, equalized all through the through the pan so you don't have one high area and one low area okay and I just want to see if I can get just a little bit more out of my pan not my pan my mixing bowl 
and we'll take the excess off. Okay, and then I'm just going to smooth the rest with my knife. My and see that those ends are covered. Okay, and there we go. Now let's set that aside. Now you're going to put this in an, a preheated oven at 375 degrees and it can take you up till 25 to 30 minutes. But you know all our ovens set up so differently. Uh, so you know you have to kind of decide. I start checking mine, believe it or not, at about 17 minutes. I try not to open the oven a lot but um, that's what I do. Now you have that crumb left over. I give it just a um, with my hands, I go over the bowl just a little bit because you do want it crumbly. You know, you do like those chunks of of sugar and brown sugar. If you don't, then you know, don't don't worry about them being big crumbles. You know, it all comes out great and it looks good and it tastes good. Okay, so and then what you'll want to do is to just take that crumb and just start spreading it out as evenly as you can. I will tell you though, try to put extra around the edges of your pan because when it does bake, it tends again to shrink in. And if you like that crumb to be right on the very, very edge, you know, um, do your very best. Sometimes I, you know, I like this one, I am putting it really right to the edge but it still shrinks a little bit. So you're not going to get away with that, you know, um, 100%. But you do want to cover it that you don't see any batter underneath, if you know what I mean, okay? And then I am trying to get those sides, those edges, even if it looks like you're building it up a little too high, um, I think you'll like it once it's baked up okay so and try to you know judge that you're sharing it throughout the whole pan and that's sort of why I like that rounded cup because I always want to just have a you know maybe a, just a couple little um, extra crumb or a half a teaspoon whatever it might be okay so again bears repeating Put this in a 375 degree oven and again it will take about uh, 25 to 30 minutes. Put it on a cooling rack when it comes out of the oven. You can serve it when it's warm. The only thing is if you start cutting it while it's too hot it is going to crack and break up. Uh, this cake is delicious really on its own. Um, I'm going to talk about some other things you can do to enhance this cake. I'm just going to wash my hands quickly here. It's working with raw egg. And I will tell you that it bakes up just beautiful. And this is one of them uh, that shows you how it bakes up. Now, if you like a lighter crust, I like mine a little bit darker because I like it to have texture. I don't want it, I want the inside to be very moist and soft, but I like those hard edges. So that's going to be up to you, you know, when you want to take it out. And then I do like where the top becomes a little bit more brown, but there you can, you can see that. Now, what I was going to say on the variations, if you want to, you can actually make a powdered sugar glaze with just powdered sugar and milk or powdered sugar and water. And you can put a glaze over this if you prefer. Um, you know, if you want something just a little bit sweeter, uh, that, that kind of thing. Um, we actually used to serve fresh fruit with it. Or believe it or not, it's excellent with actually applesauce on the side. I know that might sound odd, but it is absolutely delicious. Um, okay, and there you have the cake. You know, it has a nice moist crumb to it. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I squeeze it a little bit, you'll see. It's not, it's not um, 
real light, it's about medium in density, is, is what I guess I'm trying to um, convey to all of you, okay? But still very moist, um, and oh, it's just such a great tasting um, cake. I want to show you one other piece so it's not the edge that maybe you can see that crumb as it's coming away from my knife. Oh, look. Oh, it's absolutely delicious. So again, this cake is fantastic on its own without any glaze or sugar. Um, you can eat it alone and really enjoy it. But if you want a little more, more sweetness to it or, you know, to make it dowel the cake up a little bit, try that, um, that sugar glaze and I think you're, you're going to like it. Uh, and it makes a really nice 13 by 9 uh, sized cake. So there you have it. I want to thank you for watching Diane Love to Bake. Um, and um, if you're so inclined and you'd like to subscribe, boy, I'd really appreciate it. If you have a question or a comment, well, write to me. I'll do my best to answer in a timely fashion. Um, and Or just like the video. Uh, well, I can't thank you enough, okay? Um, also, I want to tell you again, thank you for watching Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. Stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.